Hey everybody, welcome to Rudy's Movie Review, San Antonio's unofficial movie critic, and I think this video is going to kind of piss off a lot of people, a lot of Marvel fans, and I don't mean to. I'm really coming with some seer observations from Endgame. Hey, 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 you shut your face! If we want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up your ass and work your mouth like a puppet! Now, I did a non-spoiler review back uh, in May, when, in April, when it came out, and I loved it. I loved the theater. I left on a high, I think I gave it a 90. Uh, as far as a fun, nerdgasmic experience, it was just the perfect ending to the 10 years of films that we've got from the MCU. I cried a few times, I thought it was great, but there were a lot of things that left me like, what? That didn't make sense. There were plot holes or just inconsistencies in the story that I was not expecting. God damn it, I don't know what it is about your face, but I want to deliver one of these right in your suck hole. Truthfully, to be 100% honest. So I wanted to wait. I didn't see it again in the theaters. I just saw it one time because I left the theater just like I couldn't get my brain to shut up. I go halfway through the third act. I was actually, you know what? Rudy, shut up and enjoy the movie. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all too. And that's what I did. And I was fighting it. And I was like. So now that it's out on Blu-ray, I've seen it two more times. I enjoyed it. But still, there's plot holes and just inconsistencies in the story that just leave me like I cannot be the only one who's watching these films, who's a fan of all the other films and has these questions. So here are my plot holes, observations, critiques and nitpicks, some of them for Avengers Endgame. Don't be mad and don't unsubscribe. All right. <laughs> Okay, the first one is convenience, really. Uh, we have Tony Stark out with Nebula, is stranded in the middle of nowhere space, right? He's about to die, he's got X amount of hours of uh, air left in his uh, aircraft, spaceship, excuse me. I kind of saw it coming, but when Captain Marvel showed up conveniently to save him, I knew that was gonna happen, but I also thought it was kind of lazy. I mean, what are the odds of Captain Marvel finding him in the void of space? unless a transmitter went out to kind of call her, but they didn't know she was out there. So when I first saw that, I knew what was going to happen. How else was Tony going to get home? But I was like, yeah, they could have came up with a better way. So Captain Marvel finding Tony conveniently, really hours before he died, really kind of like, oh, that's kind of a weak way to get him back home. But yeah, anyway, but still, he was 11,000 light years, according to him, away from Earth. So I don't know how Captain Marvel got him back home just by holding the ship and flying back at super light speed. I don't know. That's beside the point, because he only had a few hours of air left. So if there's a few hours of air left, can she fly from where he was at back to Earth without him suffocating? This next observation I thought was incredibly lazy writing and that's the rat that pushes the remote control device that allows Ant-Man to get out of the quantum realm. Come on, really? <laughs> Come on, really? A rat? There's so many other things that could have happened. There could have been a scene where people saw the van and were like, you know what? We want to buy that. They're just scavenging through the vans, finding, you know, these things where they can sell and they see this device and they're like, oh, what does this do? and then he escapes. That makes more sense compared to a rat who just so happens to be in the van and walks over a button. There's so many ways they could have written a better scene that explains him escaping from the quantum realm other than a rat. Come on, a rat. No one has a problem with that. Well, that's just lazy writing. The other piece that kind of had me like, what the hell's going on is the Asgardians and Valkyrie still being alive. At, of course, we all saw Infinity Wars, which again, in my opinion, is a better film than Endgame. We saw the ship destroyed. Nobody survived. Nobody escaped. Everybody died. Even Thor said all his people were, were, were killed. So when I saw Valkyrie and the two rock guys playing Fortnite with Thor, I was like, what? Are they going to explain what happened? They never did. So I, that kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm sure that I could not have been the only one who saw that and had questions. I even saw Infinity War again, and they don't mention it. Like, we have escape pods that have escaped, barely any made it. No, they were all destroyed. Even Thor's down and out. And he says, all my people are gone. How worse can it get? So 
that was inconsistent and lazy as well. So you see where I'm going with this? And it's gonna get worse. I hope you're still watching, by the way. <laughs> The other is, I, it didn't make sense to me that Iron Man's glove, the titanium alloy Iron Man arm, could hold the Infinity Stones. Because in the, again, in Infinity Wars, we were talking to giant Peter Dinklage, he was saying that Thanos wanted me to make a gauntlet that can hold the power of the stones. I made what he wanted, a device capable of harnessing the power of the stones. And he killed 300 elves, so we had that whole scene. So when I saw the stones being placed on Iron Man's armor, it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, wait, that's just titanium. Can titanium withstand the power of the stones? It kind of takes a whole Peter Dinklage of, you know, that whole scene away when you find out just a regular titanium glove can hold the stones. Really? Yeah. The next item that I'm going to bring up is really a nitpick, and that's the all-female, all-A4 scene that happened where Captain Marvel showed up with all the women. Now, it's funny. I, I really haven't been vocal about this other than a few places, but it's funny that if you don't like this scene, people accuse you of being a misogynist or a female hater, which is completely stupid. I don't get the logic and reasoning behind that. I get what the scene was supposed to mean, but the placement of it in terms of what was happening before and after Really, there was no continuity and it didn't make sense within the context of the frame of the scene, if that makes sense. You have an all-out battle taking place. People are dying left and right. Every character that you've ever grown fond of in the MCU is fighting to save Earth and to prevent Thanos from getting the gauntlet. So it just didn't make sense that a character like Captain Marvel shows up and then all of a sudden every female character shows up in one spot. And get this, half of them have never met. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> That's part of my logic when I saw them. Like, wait, they've never met. Only a few of them have. But apparently I'm saying that it's probably gonna make me misogynist according to some people. It, I, I get it means representation. I get that, but it could have done better like they did it in Infinity Wars. There's an all-female scene where she's not alone and they fought and it made sense because the characters in that scene had camaraderie, they knew each other. There are scenes previous to that showing them working together. So it made sense within the context of the frame. Here, it made no sense. That's why it felt out of place for me. That's why I was like, oh, that's right, I'm watching a Disney movie. Uh, Good day, sir! And the last thing I want to talk about is the time travel element in the film. They have their own set of rules and the Hulk explains it in this scene. Think about it. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. And I'm thinking, I have the paperback to Age of Ultron. If you haven't read it, please check it out. It's really good and a hundred times better than the film. In that comic book, time travel is a major core element of the story. There's even a scene where Wolverine has to go back and kill himself because killing himself prevents that Wolverine from going and making other events happen. This film, honestly, will, does not work without that new rule they've set. If they go with the traditional rules of time travel, this film's a mess. Think of all the paradoxes. Snake, what have you done? You changed the future. You've created a time paradox. Think about everything that can go wrong and they have to go back and fix. It, it just wouldn't work. And I'm thinking they're trying to wrap up everything one big bow and they can't do without making new rules for time travel. So I thought that was also a lazy cop out. It really was. Uh, a lot of things were happening. Loki ends up being alive still. Okay, what happens to that Tesseract? What's going on? Cap has to go back in time with six stones and put them back exactly where they were supposed to be to correct the timelines. Okay, well, how does he get the stone back in Natalie Portman? It just raises too many questions. See, and you can go on and on and on and on, and that's kind of a big mess, and that is why, really, I thought this film was okay. It's emotional, the performances are amazing. Robert Downey Jr., I hope he gets nominated for Best Actor. I doubt he will. If Hugh Jackman was nominated for Logan, 
I'm sorry, but Robert Downey Jr. isn't. I, I wish he, I want him to, but it's not gonna happen. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, amazing performances. Everybody brought an emotional side to the characters that really we hadn't seen. I teared up and I loved the film, but still, watching it again, there is just, you see all these inconsistencies and all this laziness. And it's, it's okay, after my third viewing, I think it's okay. It's okay. You son of a bitch. You no good damn. Do you agree with me? You probably don't, but if you agree with me or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your side. I am not a comic book uh, genius or aficionado, so if all there's certain rules that apply to the rules set in Endgame that I'm not aware of, please correct me, let me know. I'm just going with the universe the MCU built from Iron Man 1 till now. That's what I'm following. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And as always, thank you for watching Rudy's Movie Review, San Antonio's unofficial movie critic. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And also subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. As always, take care. God bless and live long and prosper. And I'm out. Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs>